I've learned a lot, learned a lot, and I've followed my passion. Followed my passion. It's Principles of Passion. I have a dream. With hosts Chris Thomas and Mickey Grace. So how we really envision a world where all youth are inspired to find, define, and follow their passion. This idea that we're going to be able to bring together so many creative thinkers, so many young people, and so many industry leaders. Today, Chris and Mickey sit down with Keishwan Owen, Justin Cunningham from Social Works, Shauna, and Evan Price of Artists Collect, and introducing Swervis on the Beats. This is Principles of Passion. Let's get it, y'all. How y'all doing? Can y'all hear me? A lot, learned a lot, and I followed my passion. My passion. It's Prince. Yes, yes. Here we go. Run it back. Let's go. We're on live. Let's That's go. I'm just. I'm humbled to be around such graceful people that are doing amazing things in the community. Um, man, I'm, I'm, I, I become at a loss for words and I tear up when I just get to experience the energy of amazing people like what we have today on our show and what we just have lined up a whole season. Um, I wanna give a special shout out, first of all, to one of my mentors, uh, when you look at creativity, that's what our season is really this year, the creative divide. When you look at the creative economy, um, today we're going to be talking about a conversation and really talking about what access and innovation looks like within a creative economy. But there was someone that always believed in me throughout uh, the past 10 years and throughout some of my challenges you know, in the workforce. And I just want to give a shout out to Kim Marzano over at Advanced Group. Just amazing spirit, amazing person. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful people, man. So shout out to Kim Marzano. I definitely want to dedicate this season to her. Um, thank you for your wisdom, your patience, um, and your amazing uh, will to want to do better in our community. Thank you. Um, Another big shout out to Mickey Grace in the house. <laughs> Mickey Grace, what up? Hey, so host, like what up? No, <laughs> no. I'm going to let Mickey obviously talk to her as we get into the show. But man, when I first met Mickey and I was looking for someone to get on the board, someone to help us with marketing, someone to help us with strategy. Um, and someone really to help us with connecting with her mindset, right? She's such a wise person. I'm so honored um, to be a part of this with her. Um, and I'm just, I'm glad she joined. I was like, yo, she said yes. I was like, let's go. So uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I thank you. Thank um, you. Go ahead, girl. I'm going to let you take it away for a minute. Yeah. So I'm super excited to be a part of this. Um, your Passion First is, when I when I heard the name Your Passion First, it was like immediately, it just clicked for me. Uh, particularly because my background, a lot of people don't know, but my background is particularly in workforce development and uh, human resources. Mm -hmm. And when I first graduated college, I was working with young adults of color in Oakland, LA, in California, really helping them to gain access to career opportunities. And something that I noticed a lot of welcome hey Keyshawn welcome 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 
something that I noticed is that a lot of our young people, right, they really want to go into creative industries. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, their parents, um, they come from low income families. They come from a lot of hardships. And while there are jobs in manufacturing, there are jobs in retail, they're just really doing that until they can get to that creative artistic pursuit that mm -hmm. they really love and are passionate about. So today I'm just super excited to share this space with each of you. And before we jump into our amazing panel and begin our feature conversation about the creative economy, the need for access and innovation, I definitely wanted to just engage Chris a little bit for our new viewers, those who are new to your passion first, those who don't know a lot about what we do, and just give them a sense of what this is all about. So Chris, you as the founder, as the executive director of Your Passion First, just tell us a little bit about um, where this idea came from in you yeah no i appreciate you asking that um you know i grew, i was born on the south side but i'm not one of those kids that that grew up like some of the challenged uh white black brown people that i see in some of our under-resourced neighborhoods i had the privilege of growing up here in oak park but you know my pops lived on the south side my grandma stayed in the garden and I always saw like a disparity in the communities, especially four blocks away from me in the Austin community. And it just paid me to see such um, a disparity with so close of a distance between communities. Um, and as I got into the workforce, I wanted to understand how communities connected. And when I got into staffing, I don't really think that this was what I thought out or set out to do. But as I kind of immersed into the staffing space, like I saw that there was no compassion for people as organizations hired on entry level people. And then I saw it even worse in our communities that are black and brown people. And so what I wanted to do is really try and find a solution or look for a solution to fill that gap, but from a social perspective. Um, how do we immerse kids into the workforce, meet them at their level with things that we can engage them with? that may not be your traditional means of education, right? Mm -hmm. And then still teach them the skills that they need within those pillars, right? That they're that are at that level, within art, within music, within entertainment, sports and culinary, and then apply those skills real time to the workforce and, and allow them to connect with their communities. So, you know, in summary, really just trying to understand um, what some of the disparities are in staffing and where some of the communication gaps are within staffing as well as the community and just how to how to be a, a conduit right for the community and for the youth in the community and then try and understand organizations a little bit better as well and see what their challenges are as they bring in youth yeah, I love I love I love everything you're saying, particularly because I know that this kind of work I heard someone say a while ago and it, and it really strikes the core for me. It says systematic issues need systematic solutions. And when you're trying to make a systematic shift, you need to be sure that you are engaging in collective change, collective impact, working across industries, working across stakeholders. And that's one thing that I absolutely love about the model we're building for your passion first and the reason why I know it's going to work and I know it's going to change the world. Um, so as you think about, uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about, because something that I that I think is really interesting and a lot of people don't know about your passion first is how, yes, we are educating the youth and the young adults on Sundays and in our programming, but at the same time, we're giving them the opportunity to work within the organization, um, to apply the things that they're learning in real time. Can you talk a little bit about um, that and what you hope that that will do for the young people and for the organization as a whole? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you asking that. And I want to be very clear um, about the difference for me, at least personally, between work and volunteering. Right now, I feel that they're volunteering, right? Because there's a difference between showing up and then showing up and getting paid and then both and then being able to show up and get paid and do something you love. And so with a lot of younger kids, they want an opportunity to gain real life experience. And I see a challenge there because they also want to get paid for it. Our kids are not that. They're so passionate. They're like, yo, I know I don't have the experience, 
Let me just get to work. Show me how to get on a website. Show me how to create content. And we have just beautiful people around us that are stepping up as volunteers to train them and to give them those skills that can help them be the next content creator in a Google and a Facebook. So wherever they want to be, be a production you know, manager in an organization within five years. So um, really just trying to understand how we can do that better. Yeah, that's so that's awesome. I know that like um, so with some of the other clients that I work with, I will do uh production for them. I'll host and I'll produce um just like different kinds of social impact entertainment that will drive their uh initiatives. And one thing I always do is I always look to expose young people. And recently um I exposed about 10 young people to a professional production and they were paid. And the thing was though, the thing that really got me was when they walked in to the production space. This was their face, y'all. Amazed. Amazed. They were just like, you know, and it dawned on me that for a lot of young people who look like me, this was their first time ever right. being exposed to a high quality production. This was their first time ever being on camera ever. And yeah. it, it did something for them. It was, it, it, it was less about the money and the prize that we were giving them and more about the opportunity because every single young person that uh, interviewed with me in that production came back and was like, hey, I'm looking for more opportunities. So if you think of anything or if you come across anything or hey, I'm trying to get started in this creative area, is there something that you, any advice that you might be able to give me? Um, so I really love that we are like creating a space for young people to really just gain exposure begin building that portfolio that they're going to need because for whatever reason employers still have not gotten the picture that sometimes it is better to value potential over experience mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're creating that opportunity for them to get that experience that they'll need to get their foot in the door so mm -hmm. thank you so much Chris for talking a little bit about your passion first and your vision and everything that you have in mind. And we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I know you're putting in hard work. I know you're putting in long hours. I know you're connecting with some of the dopest people in Chicago and across the nation. And we value everything that you're doing. So before we jump into our focused conversation around the creative economy, the need for access and innovation, I just wanted to take a moment, Chris, to ask you and everybody get your answers prepared because you're going to get access the same exact question okay so chris what are your principles of passion <laughs> what are your principles of passion and when i say that you all it's really what are your guiding principles as a member of the creative economy what are your principles of passion You know, I have some guiding ones. I think one of the biggest ones for me is do the right thing. Um, that's your right thing though. And a lot of people can tell you your right thing and their right thing and how they feel you should do. You gotta trust you and your support system. Um, I think that leads into my second one is trusting you, right? You and your support system. When everyone else is, when no one else is there, you're always gonna be there. And it's gonna always be that little head inside of you too, uh, telling you what you should, what you shouldn't do. And so there has to become a deep level of trust with inside yourself. I think part of that trust is built upon doing what you say you're gonna do, mm -hmm. right? You may not do it the best, you may not do it amazing, but if you're always trying to grow, then you're always gonna be not exactly where you wanna be, because when you get there, you're gonna be trying to get to the next level. So I think really just being conscious of that. Yeah. And Chris is definitely a man of integrity, you all. He definitely mm -hmm. does what he say he going to do. <laughs> you need people around you like that, right? Yeah, because sometimes not around, the best, but we getting there. <laughs> we get there, right? We get there. But you need people get... around you like that because when you mm -hmm. have people around you who do what they say they going to do, it makes you be more accountable to doing what you say you're going to do. So I definitely yeah. value that about you. 
When I think about my principles of passion, I'll just share one before I get into our awesome dope line. Yeah, you guys, we got a, there might be an echo. Does somebody have a double phone on or something? Let's just make sure we're all checked in and have our phones on or anything. I'll check too. Yeah, or if, or if we're not speaking, we could just be on mute. This wouldn't this wouldn't be a, a video call. We didn't have no echo. <laughs> this would not be a video call if we didn't have something. <laughs> so don't even trip. Okay, so when I think about my principles of passion, I would say um, one of my biggest principles, one of my biggest values is story. Um, I think that like our story is the most valuable thing we have. It's the most valuable thing we have. And I have been in situations where, um, especially with young people, you are, especially with young adults, and especially with young adults who are a part of like programs or nonprofit organizations or things along the lines of that, they will give their story away for free for in a, in a hot second. They'll give their story away for free in a hot second and be po broke, starving, and gangbanging, trying to figure out how they gonna make ends meet. And for me, um, the more I get into hosting, the more I get into media, the more I get into data analytics, um, the more I recognize how much our story is actually worth. So when I'm engaging young people, I'm always, uh, and when I'm engaging people and I'm engaging clients who are like, hey, can you do this interview for this person? I'm always like, yeah, what's your budget, right? Because even if they're 17, even if they're, you know, 19, 20, we need to pay these people at the end of the day. Um, I have been in, you know, like, especially now thinking about Corona and COVID-19 and how this has been impacting so many lives. People are hungry for these stories. They are hungry for these stories on how is your life being impacted or what's going right or what's going left. And at the same time, we're hungry for these stories. People are still trying to figure out how, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to get groceries? So for me, I just really value story and I recognize the um, impact it makes. And I recognize as people who are trying to make a social shift, the way we measure that kind of impact is through narrative. It's not necessarily through um, numbers. It's not necessarily through um quantitative data is through sitting down and talking to people and understanding how their lives have been impacted so for me it's definitely story and each of these people on this line today have an awesome story that got them here with us and i'm so excited to introduce you all to this lineup that we got so let's get started first and foremost i want to introduce you all to evan price let's clap it up for evan <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Evan Price is the founder of Artist Collective, a music company in the city of Chicago that assists independent artists with strategies, tools, and the means to create sustainable businesses out of their passions that get them back to the music. Evan, what's going on? <laughs> Yes, yeah, nice. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here um, with all of you guys. Um, thanks for the intro. You're welcome. You're welcome. Next up, we got the awesome, the dope, the dude with the cool virtual background. He don't got it right now. <laughs> but he had it before. We got Justin Cunningham. Let's clap it up for Justin, everybody. Let's clap it up. <laughs> Welcome, Justin. Justin is the executive director of Social Works, a youth empowerment charity in the city of Chicago. As a founding member, Justin is involved with all things Social Works. He is diligently working across all. So excuse me. He is diligently working to produce branding strategies, content, and funding for the organization's initiatives and events. Justin, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Thank Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready to spread some knowledge and receive some as well. Nice, nice. We're so happy to have you, Justin. Thanks so much for taking the time today. Next up, we got Keyshawn Owens. Everybody clap it up for Keyshawn. <laughs> 
we're so excited. Thank and you. let me just pause before I introduce Keyshawn. So Keyshawn um, actually worked with me um, before this. He uh, did an interview with me about his COVID-19 story and how that has been impacting him. And it was so dope. He was super articulate, super just um, vulnerable in terms of the things that he's going through. And the reason why I'm pausing here is because a lot of times, right, we see organizations having these conversations without the youth that they are serving at the table, right? We get so, I have been in so many rooms in conversations with people about people who are not there. <laughs> And for me and Chris, that is just problematic, right? We're thinking from a human-centered perspective. So we want to make sure that we always have our young people at the table. We're always giving them an opportunity to speak into the solution because they are the solution. So Keyshawn, thank you so much for being here. Keyshawn Owens is... A 20-year-old artist from the west side of Chicago, he is extremely passionate about fashion design, music production, acting, modeling, and community work. He is a part of our first inaugural class of Your Passion First, and we're so excited to have him here today. Hey, Keyshawn, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. I always knew I'd be in there working with you after the first time. Um, Thank you very much. It was just wonderful. Good. Gotta work again. So good. Can't wait to get into this conversation with you. All right. Last but definitely not least. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, we got Shauna. Everybody clap it up for Shauna real quick. Hey, everyone. Hey. Okay. Shauna who goes by the stage name Prophecy, is a Chicago native who uses her gifts in music to build social, social and emotional skills that helps youth and young adults effectively deal with the trauma and violence they face in their community, which is so important. Shauna, how you doing today? Great, happy to be here talking about what I love the most. <laughs> Yes, and we love you. We're so happy that you're here. And let me not forget to mention that Shauna is also one of the mentors in our program. So our young people are paired with mentors because we want to make sure that they are building connections at every level of this, okay? Uh, so Shauna is one of our mentors, and we're so happy to have her in this conversation. Why? Because we want our program participants and our volunteers to be at the table when we are coming up with solutions. Okay. That's everyone, right? We don't got nobody backstage, right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> we good. We good. I appreciate that. One thing I want to point out, too, just about Kishwan, like, I met Kishwan when I was meeting um, a professor from UIC. Uh, we were trying to put together our curriculum. And, like, I just saw him. I saw his art. I was like, yo, I got to go up to this dude. And, like, it was just, it was meant to be. And, once you guys hear his story and you hear uh, some of the things he's done, uh, I think you'll be inspired by his clothing, his music, his art, like all that. So I appreciate you again. And just, again, beautiful people on here. Justin, Evan, appreciate y'all being on. Thanks, man. All right. So let's jump in. And since we went ahead and highlighted Keyshawn, we're going to start with him. And then we'll go Keyshawn, Justin, Evan, and Shauna. What? Let us know, Keyshawn, what is one of your principles of passion? Okay, well, one of my principles of passion is I always, always wake up in the morning with, I want to, I want to say motivation, but it's deeper than that. It's, it's more like perseverance. It's like I wake up every day knowing something that it has to get done. Because I know that there's people out there, they want to do it, but they either have situations that's holding them back or they just don't have enough motivation to get out of bed to do it. And I know me having all this energy that I have, I know that I have to exert this to be able to open up doors for other people. Knowing that I, I know that I'm different and the ways that I want to express myself is through creativity. I tend to lean towards different ways to express myself and I see that people that are in my age, they do the same thing. But mm. I don't know what to do, so that's why I've always used my networking skills to find different people that can inspire me and be able to give back to them. So one of my main things is perseverance. Um, can I, can I add a second one? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go for it. My second one will always, 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 always be to inspire because there is a lot of people, they, once again, they don't, they don't have, um, the right resources or they have situations holding them back from doing what they want. 
and they could just be watching you on the sidelines, just shining. And you can inspire a lot of people doing that. And I had a lot of people just hit my arm. She asked me, hey, man, I like your song, or I like your work, or I like the clothes that you did for such and such. Do you mind doing this for me, or do you mind helping me out with this? Uh, I always am open to the open people out there as well. You know, there's no use to hold it back and see other people doing it, and then you know, we try to get to the heart of it. Yeah, I love that you said to inspire. There's this young lady. Uh, well, she's not a young lady, but she she a young lady. Uh, <laughs> her name is Jamila Biggs Yarbrough, um, and she has a YouTube series called First. And I remember when I first watched First, I was watching it. She's starring in it. She wrote it, and she starred in it. And when I was watching it, though Jamila was in character, I was not watching her character. I was watching Jamila. I was thinking in my head, like, oh, my God, this is a black woman, you know, who wrote this, directed this and star in this. And I was inspired, you know, and I feel like you're so right in the terms of like when we are living in our light, we open up the doors for other people to do what it is they, they aspire to do. So thank you for sharing that. All right, Justin, you next. Principles of passion. As you think about the creative economy and being a member of the creative economy, what is your principles of passion? Yeah, uh, some of my principles of passion. Well, number one is um, definitely not to take myself too seriously. I mean, there's a certain intention that you put in everything, you know, but um, but I think that not taking yourself seriously speaks to a level of growth and a level of failure that's inher inherent with any endeavor. So when you speak about that, you know, mistakes are going to happen. And if those mistakes happen, you're going to let them, you know, crush you. Or are you just going to be like, dang, I was tweaking. Time to tweak again, you know? So, um, so that's definitely one of mine. And I mean, like with social works, um, you know, there's so much failure that happens within social works and, you know, but it's, but it's that repeatedness that allows us to, you know, not fail anymore or just get more creative and more, you know, strategic with our approach. Um, I got, a, I got two more. Um, go ahead. You got it. Go for it. It's just... Another one is just to know yourself. You know, you talk about uh, like living in your life, wanting to inspire people, but some people get so hung up on the fact that they're not this or they're not that. And like, you know, I love that one of my, the first person, I don't remember your name, dude, I'm sorry. But the first person who talked, he was like, um, you know, knowing who I am. And like that, I felt that to be a great strength of mine because not everybody is me. You know, I, you know, he was just like, I'm different. Like all of us <laughs> are different, you know, and, and it's, and it's that differentness that allows us to come together and create this magical or amazing, you know, puzzle. So, right. so I would just say everybody who's like, oh man, I wish I was a little bit taller. Wish I was taller. <laughs> you know, like, forget all of that, you know, and just like live in your life. And like the last one, gotta be you know mission focused like if you if you're not waking up you know like like homie said with some goals or with some sort of intention then like you're already behind and it's okay to have the intention of trying to figure out your intention you know what i'm saying right but you can't just be aimless about it and it's just with every uh it's with every conversation you got to know why you're in the room and really what you want to you know, get out of it because so many people are trying to bend that or sway you to a side to push you under, you know, what they feel is most favorable for them and their family. And you gotta be, you know, you have just gotta be aware because that night might not be best for you and your family. Oh, man, we haven't even got to Shana and Evan yet, and it's already so much truth. Yes. <laughs> you know, a, few things, a few things I want to say before we, before we check in with Evan is um really what you're saying, you know, Justin, is a few things. We don't fail, we learn. We don't fail, we learn. And for a lot of my coaching clients, right, my coaching clients, because I coach young people and because I coach artists, um, they get so caught up, right, in like, oh, I didn't do this right, or oh, I didn't get this many likes, or oh, I didn't get this many views. And I have to tell them, hey, we don't fail, we learn. We don't strive for perfection, we strive for progress because perfection is not real, right? And I think that Everything that you're speaking to is so important in this day and age when we have so many distractions and interruptions coming our way. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Evan, principles of passion. What you got? All right. So 
I I call them values. And yep. this is something that I am uh, being a part of, which I'm really excited for on, on Sunday with your passion first. This is kind of what I'm going to be talking about. But I have five core values that, that, I, that I take with me every day. Yeah. Empathy, ambition, honesty, self-awareness, and creativity. And to be able to really hone in and find what those are and what moves you as a person or as an artist or whatever is, is really important. Empathy in particular. Um, I've had to learn this over, over time and it's really just, you have to see yourself in another person and treat them with that same respect. And that's how you build opportunities and that's how you build relationships because that's where opportunities come from. They come from relationships. Um, ambition, of course. I mean, you have um, you have to say you have to stay driven. You have to you have to self motivate sometimes, and it's not always it's not always easy. It's not always easy to do that, but you have to you have to find that every day, whatever that might be. Um, honesty, of course, is a little self explanatory. I mean, you, you you like you said earlier, like to be able to work with somebody who's going to do what they say they're going to do is actually very rare. So being honest with um, with what you can and can't do, I think is really important, especially when you're when we're talking about business and, and the creative economy. Um, artists do like to kind of gas themselves up a little bit and be dishonest. And it's you can kind of see through that and it destroys the relationship. I've seen it destroy relationships with, with artists in particular. Um, and self-awareness, like Justin said, like you really need to know your intentions and know, um, you know, what you're not so good at and you need to maybe uh, train harder or what you are good at and how you can inspire others to do that. So, um, and a creativity, of course, I mean, we're all artists here. We're all some kind of creatives. That's why we're doing this. That's our passion. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's about taking something that's already there and making it better. So how can we do that? You know, I uh, recently, so right now, quick plug, uh, Artist Collective has a free one month membership going on. And I recently um, got that membership just to check it out, you know, see what they got going on. And it was crazy because I got on and like maybe like two or three weeks before I got on Artist Collective, I was kind of reassessing my values. I was reassessing my values. And one of the first lessons that I checked out was about how, like, if you're building your social media page, one good way to know what kind of content you want to put on your page is to think about what are your values? What values do you want to portray on this page? And that's one cool way to connect with people who share your values. And these people become your super fans. And I just thought that that was like, one of the coolest, dopest concepts and ideas um, that I have heard of in a long time. So thank you, Evan. Thanks for everything you're doing. Thank everything. you. Hey, thanks, for, thanks for checking that out. Hey, yeah, of I, course. Let's leave it open, too, for anyone that wants to uh, join our two-hour workshop this Sunday. Go to our website. We'll give you this workshop for free. It's two hours. Um, it'll be 6 to 8 p.m. You can go to our, our website. It's yourpassion1st.com and just go to the contact us page. Again, it'll be Sunday, 6 to 8 p.m. So feel free to hit us up. We'll make sure that you get the invite. Nice. Thanks, Chris. Shana. Hey. What so, you got? After listening to all y'all, I feel like each one of y'all covered it all in some way, shape, or form. But I'm going to go ahead and put my list out there anyway. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Um, so one big one for me is self-love. Um, you have to love it. Um, when, you're able, when you're able to love yourself, to me, it opens up the door for that reciprocation to get to others as well. Um, Self-awareness, you guys have already said that. I teach that big in all of my groups of therapists. Um, that's a big thing. It helps you to understand what's going on with you, checking in with yourself. Empathy, um, my gift is, in, in, is empathy. So being able to get into people's shoes, but it also drives compassion. Um, also, one thing I, um, I never give up. So never give up. I keep a group of my kids where I um I have one person stand still and I walk forward and I fall all over the place. But I have a destination. No matter what, I get to that destination. And that's what I teach them is they're gonna have those hiccups. The point is you still get up and you still keep on because the only way you're gonna fail is if you quit. So those are pretty much my guys. <laughs> Yeah, I love those. I joined one of Chris's first workshops um, that he does with the youth and young adults. Something that he said, it really stuck out to me. He said, live in the results. 
live in the results. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, there are things that are going to happen to us. But the way I think about life is kind of like a math problem. Y'all know when we were in like grade school and high school and the teacher used to be like, X equal X divided by Y equals 36. And at the end of the day, there are a wide variety of ways to get to 36. Mm -hmm. And the teacher's goal, their goal is to help you figure out how to get to 36 most quickly. So that when the test comes, you're not doing this long problem. You're not doing it the long way. You're doing it the quick way. And I think of life that way. There are a wide variety of ways we can get to that 36, that goal, that vision that we have for our life. Mm -hmm. And failing is just learning about how to get us there more quickly. So thank you all so much for sharing that. Um, I'm going to definitely be keeping y'all principles and passion in mind. We're going to be each other's accountability partners nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be definitely getting that in mind. Okay, you all. So let's jump in. Right. The creative economy and the creative divide. Um, so I heard about the creative economy. Um, I would say about three years ago, about three years ago. And when I first heard the term creative economy, I thought to myself, oh, this means that like the way the economy is going to be set up, the way the economy works as a system is going to be creative in nature. It's not going to look like how uh, we, we it traditionally looks. Um, and when I heard the creative divide, which a lot of people y'all are not talking about, if you Google the creative divide, you will not find a lot of research. You will not find a whole bunch of people talking about this. But I think that there, there are so many different types of creativity divides. And for me, the biggest one that I see is the divide between creative ideation and creative output. The ability to come up with an idea in your head and then the, the act, actually having access to a, a microphone, a studio, a, a editing tool, um, the things that you need to get that creative idea out of your brain and into the world. So my, my first question for you all is when you think about the term, the creative economy, and the creative divide, what do you envision? What do you see? What does that mean? And I'll start with Justin, because I feel like Justin over here, like, in deep thought. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, I think the creative divide comes in two ways. The creative divide is something that you place on yourself but then it's also interlocked with all the structural BS that is involved with America or just the world. You know, I'm talking about racism. I'm talking about, you know, transportation deficits. I'm talking about nutritional stuff like that. And there's, there's different ways to com combat it. The, I want to just first off say the creative divide has nothing to do with all the money. Like, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody on this call, if they had a million dollars, like, they would still have a, some sort of creative divide, you know? So to all the students out there, I just want to say it's not money. You know, I'm, I can buy chips now and my life ain't the best. Um, but with all that being said, you know, um, I think the first thing that we need to overcome is, uh, is, is being able to like do it, you know? So like the first level of creative divide is, is not telling yourself, oh man, I can't do it. Oh man, this like, finding some sort of creative creativity to go ahead and execute. And that's where you start to open up that box, you know? And then mm. when we start, start talk about a more like structural level, there's, there's boards, there's businesses all over, there's unions all over the city and country that are, you know, exacerbating that creative divide. You know, the creative divide is on a structural level is nothing but access and knowledge. And if kids don't know that they can go ahead and build Lollapalooza stages and they don't have to be a, a rapper, then like, that's a whole economy right there. If people know that, um, you know, all this other stuff, you know, it's just all about these opportunities and stuff. And I think that there's, there needs to be 
very intentional acts, uh, very intentional steps to go ahead and shorten that divide from a structural level. But mm. for people who are on here and be like, man, I ain't got the job, I just got fired. Like, you know, cool. There was still another part that I said, and that part is in you. Mm. You know, people Jimmy Riggin and MacGyvering these cool videos. I could have made my background a cool house. I think I might do that after this. But you know, it's <laughs> creators by our own that nobody can tell us not except for us. So I challenge everybody on here to say, hell yeah, I can do it and just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can jump in here too. Cool. I would like to jump in. <clears throat> that was great. Mm -hmm. I see it a little differently. I would like to come at it with a, with a, with a new approach. Oh, oh, that's nice. Yes. Uh, you're, you're completely disappeared though now. Oh, there you are. Um, I I see it a little bit different when I just when you just first said that the creative economy and the creative divide. I see it as the divide within the creative economy between creatives. Um, mm. I work with a lot of artists that you know they they have that scarcity mindset. They think oh because they got a thousand views or they got a show, that means that's less for me. And I don't mm -hmm. think that that's true. And I think we are completely just as creatives, you know, it's we've got that competition mindset instead of that collaboration mm -hmm. mindset. Um, and that goes between all forms of art, music and painting and graphic design. Like you're not, you're not actually um, competing with each other. You're basically competing with all other forms of entertainment or anything to do. So it, I feel like we're, by working together, we can maybe close that divide. That's kind of how, how I see that that phrase. Mm. Mm. I, you know what? It's both to, to just talk a little bit about both of what you all said. Um, really what I got from Justin is Justin talks a lot about the divide within. The divide within. Um, and for a lot of us, even for me, some days it, 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 it we, we go from being, um, creative to consumptive. And we know that sometimes too much consumption can be degenerative. <laughs> it can be degenerative and not regenerative. And we get so caught in this cycle of consuming other people's creativity that we forget that we have our own and there becomes this divide between actually ideating and just doing and using whatever tools you got to get it done um and then evan like something i want to say to say to what you were mentioning and i say this all the time to to my young artists that i coach and to the folks that the business owners that i coach we do not compete we collaborate we don't compete we collaborate and I think that that mindset is so key because when you take out this idea of competition, it opens up so many doors. I think like I was, I don't know if it was, maybe it was Artist Collective I was looking at again, but they were saying like, nah, it was Social Works. It was actually Social Works. I was watching the live and Kovana Washington on the live was talking about how many people there are on the internet. And it's like a billion people on the internet. And out of all these people, you think that if so-and-so got 15K views and you only got 9,000 views, that they taking views from you? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. Um, so yeah, that's that's a really good point. And, and, and we'll talk about that more. Like, I wanna know. What, how do you all think we, how do you think we debunk that? And let's go to, let's go to uh, get Shauna and um, Keyshawn in here on this question. How do we debunk those kinds of divides, that competitiveness between artists and creatives, and then also that, that inner struggle that we work with? And we can go uh, Shauna, then we'll go Keyshawn. Um, so when I look at that, I think that because um, I see that even within myself for a long time, I held myself back because of, I was afraid of what I'd be accepted. Learning that self-awareness and kind of just doing my own thing is what allowed. I guess what I learned is your gift will make room for you. Um, but I think that at this point, because it's so um, it's like so saturated with that competition that honestly, people have to come out modeling what it looks like to show that, to show that we're not competing. We open the doors for one another and we show that to others and they see that, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that will, if it's an, love is infection, people see that love given, they'll be want to be a part of that love given. But I think it's hard because it's hard to believe if you're not able to see it. 
unfortunately, where we get seeing is believing in this world. So people have to see that. Yeah, modeling collaboration. I love that. I always tell um, when I'm working internally with clients and I'm working with their staff, uh, that was a hard lesson I had to learn, modeling behavior. Mm -hmm. um, I have been in situations where I'm like, I feel like people don't share credit. That's really big for me, like honoring people who help and honoring people who work. And I have been in situations where I felt like people didn't give me credit or share credit. And I was like, should I just address this? And someone was like, you know, model the behavior that you like to see. Yes. Model the behavior you like to see. So, Keishwan, when you think about that, um, you Andre King said you have to compete with yourself, not anyone else. Yeah, I like Thanks, that. Andre, for checking in with us. We appreciate all our viewers here, all the folks that we got on live checking in with us today. Definitely want to say we love and appreciate you all. So, Keishwan, when you think about this inner divide or this competitiveness, and you're an artist yourself. So tell me, we all are, but right, you're a young, young adult artist. Um, <laughs> tell me, is this something that you see and experience in your day-to-day -day work? I see it every time I text someone about collaboration. I realize that the fine line between pride and confidence is not there anymore. There's a lot of people like um, like Evan said, there's a lot of people that gas their careers and there are people that feel that since their music is good or they make these really vibes for their music but collaborate with these people and I see that with a lot of people around Chicago and this term that I use called Hollywood there's a lot of people that you know well, we all collaborate and I'll do this with you and this that and the third and I'll see this first and I'll see this one so I'm just coming here from them again. But you later down the line here you make the music with what you want to collaborate with them with. Um there's a there's a lot of fun creating to do that and I'd like to piggyback on um, the prophecy said about being a model when you first start out, the way that I do that myself is with the actions and fashion designing and the modeling and the community outreach to let people know right off the bat that I mean and for the people. I'm not doing this for myself. Mm -hmm. I understand that it's bigger than me. It's not, it's not always about who has the most likes. It's usually about um, how we all came in before. It's about our, um, our what's the word, our principles, our values. That's what yeah. I so being able to be open-minded, be able to be based on who you collaborate with, it, it be for the people to be more confident. That's what I'm about. Because once again, the fine line between both those are there's people who want to support popularity and talent. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is crazy to me. And part of why this is crazy to me, Keishwan, Justin, Shauna, Chris, Evan, is because when I think about so creative economy is we have, right, like these creative industries. And then we also recognize that the creative economy is a knowledge-based economy. Um, and a lot of this, you don't get this stuff without collaboration. <laughs> you don't get this stuff without working with other people. If I think about music, it's so many people in one song. <laughs> it's so many it's so many. And I know y'all know it, right? Because have All of the life by Kanye. Right. Have y'all been watching? Um, it's a little sidetrack. But if y'all have been watching Versus on Instagram and how there has been like this big debate about whether or not they can play this song because. They name was on the song, but they didn't really sing the song. They just did the beat, right? Like all and all of this stuff is surfacing right now. And it's just so uh -huh. crazy to me that we have this kind of um, conflict. So I want to ask, and anyone can start, anyone can jump in. Um, I want to ask, what do you all believe is like the root cause? Because I'm a person, I like to uh, solve problems at the root. Um, so what do you all believe is the root cause of the creative divide? What I think, caused this? I think what caused this is a lack of resources and systematic oppression. Period. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll say capitalism. One. What y'all think? What we got? Justin and then China. Definitely going scarcity or the mentality of scarcity. So you just mm. hoard it all to yourself. Right. <laughs> I think Scarcity. lack of less of self lack of self awareness a lot of times. Um, even young artists are just kind of very focused on the end goal, and they don't they're not like changing or, or enhancing themselves at all because they haven't really looked inward. So, 
I would say that too. I think a lot of times we want the destination so bad that we forget that the process and the tools that we need are right in front of us. And the value that we really need is really just us and connecting with the people that are in our world, right? And so really just trying to redefine what that value is as we immerse into this new world of virtual where there may not be in-person schools next year and you know, really trying to look at how do you dig in intrinsically and redefine that value, you know? And I think there's a lack of that um, and, and a really a understanding of what we can bring to the world. How can we be creative? How can we be innovative? And I think part of that has been because, you know, we haven't seen a recession in 10 years, right? And so half of these kids are out here running, starting new businesses. People are being successful because they haven't seen anything the likes of this. And so I think, Really having that tenacity um, is what it's going to take to to bring it through this. Mm. Yeah, I think also being realistic with yourself. Um, you can't look at somebody like Beyonce and Jay-Z and think, I mean, you're going to be very disappointed if you think you're going to be at their level just starting in the game. You got to be realistic. And so one thing I tell people is to set daily goals and your daily goals will end up, um, will grow into something major. But don't overwhelm yourself trying to get to there because you don't know what what steps they had to take to even get there. Like you talked about in the beginning about your story. This is your story. Your story can't be anybody else's story. So let's just take it day by day and let's look at what you can do. I know even myself coming into music, you know, the first thing I thought was, oh, my God, I don't have a studio. Oh, my God, I don't have access to music. Oh, my God, I don't, I, I, bunch of, I don't have, you know. Um, but then I just started looking for things and then I started finding things and then I started, I, I was educated because I was always around people in the studio. So then I realized, girl, you can record yourself. And that's what I started to, <laughs> I started to do. Yes. Um, so it's being able to know and like having that self-awareness gave me that. I spent some time with myself. I wanted to know what I could do. And that began to tell that story. Yeah. yeah. Even before that, I'd say that it's you were just working with what you did have. Like, yeah, yeah, maybe some lack of resources. Like, there's always some resources. You know, we all wish that we had more of. It's like you just right. got to work with what you got and then build right. from there. Right. Yeah, I think so. So a few things you all are saying, man, y'all speaking a word right now. Thank you so much to all of our. Um, I just want to pause and say thank you so much to everyone who's tuning in live. We appreciate you all, and if you all have comments questions please drop them in the chat we'd be happy to entertain those um but something i wanted to say was uh i was watching this sermon the other day with uh sarah jakes roberts and she was talking about how like uh she would when, when her daddy cook like she's like when my daddy cook you know i'll wait all day i won't eat nothing like all day <laughs> she was like i pass up all of these restaurants because you know, you know when you're about to have something good, you're willing to wait, right? You know when you're about to have something good, the wait is worth it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, that is a lesson that I've had to learn. And I think a lot of us, like, speaking, building on what Shauna mentioned, is that a lot of creatives got to learn. Like, what's worth the wait? What is worth the wait? And then in addition to that, um, in addition to that, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> no, you are good. But I'm feeling that. Sorry, I do. But yeah, yeah. I would just say, like, um, yeah, everything that you all are mentioning is good. Everything that you all are mentioning is good. And I just love this conversation. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna take a moment. Look, I'm gonna take a moment here. I'm not gonna lie, like, I host a lot, y'all. And and, and this will be another conversation we have to get into, like vulnerability, authenticity, the willingness to fail in front of others, the willingness to be afraid in front of others, um, because. But, but we don't fail. Remember, we learn. We don't fail. We learn. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we learn. Um, but like every time I host, right, like I always am super anxious. I'm super nervous every time before I host. And yeah. it's crazy because people are always like, oh, my God, I'm so good. And I'll be like, damn, but I just lost my train of thought on camera. On <laughs> 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 so say all that to say, right, like we're going to go to the next question. So when y'all think about this, um, and, and I and I want to, I definitely want to get into, uh, let's, let's skip this one. Let's skip this one. Uh, 
uh, Chris, because I want to try to get into some solutions. We done talked a lot about the problem and I'm a very solution oriented person. And I think the folks on this call um, have channeled all of this problematic energy into, into some really good solutions. So let's talk about that. Um, as we think about the lack of collaboration, as we think about competition, as we think about the divide within, um, what are some innovative models you all have seen? Um, some innovative models that you all have seen that could possibly work to close this divide? Or what are some ideas that you all have in mind right now that we could work through on this call? Go Ooh. ahead, Chris. <laughs> Raising his hand. <laughs> so I, I think when I when I look at one of the biggest challenges I see in the world, um, it's lack of communication. Um, and part of that is there's cultural divides everywhere in addition to this creative divide. And so when you're looking at different cultures and different races and different ethnicities, I think there's a challenge with when people try and work to a common goal and they don't know each other and they don't know how to communicate effectively with each other. You know, you see it in relationships, you see it in businesses, you see it in the way that companies talk with their customers. Um, and so I think the biggest thing is if we can learn to communicate better, then we can transfer information better. And that's not just from you know, businesses, but that's from mentor to mentee, right? That's from parent to, to son and daughter. You know, and I've caught myself in the past couple of months, like not telling my son what to do, but asking him more questions, right? And trying to meet him at his level and understand what he's going through, right? And I can't understand if I'm just telling him what to do all the time. And so I think the biggest thing that can change is how we communicate with each other, how we communicate with our coworkers, our family members. Um, and, and listen, I'm not speaking at all from a place where I've communicated the best because I've been way off. Um, but that's one thing I'm really, really working on focusing more is not necessarily communicating what I want to communicate, but trying to understand the person that I'm communicating with so that I know mm -hmm. what to say. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I definitely think that in my um, growth as an individual, I have sought less to be understood and sought more to understand. Uh, so I 100% agree. I want to go to Evan because I think that, um, you know, what you all are doing in Artist Collective um, is in so many ways in sim sim simplistic innovation, I would say. Um, and I think that in this day and age, uh, education, right, duh, education is becoming something that is like, a super innovative route. So talk to me about a little bit about the model that you all use and what do you think the impact of um, just the work you all are doing at Artist Collective can have on the creative divide and the creative economy? Sure. Um, so yeah, we have all of our members are sometimes young, sometimes in the middle of their career, sometimes they're doing great and they just want support system and they want education on how the music industry works. So a lot of them, instead of, you know, they don't want to go to college, they don't want to spend $100,000 to go to to go to Columbia or something, but they still want to make money doing what they love, make money with their passion. So we help them provide a community of other artists that are collaborating, that have other passions. Maybe they're a guitarist or they're a producer or they're a singer or they're a manager as well. So that collaborative effort uh, mindset is there. And we also, as you were talking about earlier, uh, we have trainings, we have monthly curriculum that we all go through together as a group. Um, this month, for instance, is uh, all about building the foundations of social media. Like, let's go back to the basics. What are some things that you might be missing that are that's opportunities and strategies that you may not find in a textbook? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I just see it as the entertainment industry is one of the fastest moving industries. And we need to keep up with that. So we keep up with that. Like, oh, cool. Facebook just announced something that's going to change your career. We're going to talk about it tomorrow type of thing. We don't have to go through. <laughs> we don't have to go through this big school system and um, try to get it approved. And by that time, it's changed again. 
So we just want to create a community for artists and some education to help push them in the right direction. And with that motivation as well, Hey, you can do it. There's other people making money doing this. I know you can too type of thing. So, so, so yeah, I guess to answer to your question, um, just outside of even Artist Collective, just having options and even affordable options, let me just add that on there too, is important for people who are, for artists and young young people who are still trying to figure out their passions. Maybe yeah. maybe this isn't it. I would hate for you to go through a four year degree and then realize, you know, drumming isn't for you. Uh, I, I would hate for that to happen. It's like low, you know what I mean? So it's just bankrupting people. So yeah. I, I, I hope to, Dip your toe in the water, see if you like it. If not, you know, move on to pottery or whatever else you want to try. It doesn't matter. But um, I think just creating these options, these affordable options for people to just jump in, feel a part of a community, and have the education they need to, to grow. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Shana. I was just going to say, um, just kind of pick, because that is so important to be able to have options. Um, another thing that I see, just because um, as a therapist, especially working within the school system, um, you know, they don't offer that level of creativity and the kids don't know what to do. Um, so when I came into school and I'm offering things and they're like, wow, you know, they didn't. And that's the thing. They don't know who they don't know how to access people. They don't know who to access, you know, but um, and then you don't if you don't have that resource there in front of you, you don't know. You're not aware. So we only know what we see. So our kids are seeing music. So they only see a certain type of music, a certain type of people. So they're thinking that must be what I'm supposed to do. So they don't have options. So like, even if a kid comes up to me and he's playing with chemicals, I want to know what type of brain that is. I don't try to box that in. I'm like, so what kind of, what are you a chemist? What do you do? Um, and then they want to know, well, what does a chemist do? Let's look that up. But they don't know what's out there. They don't even know what options they have. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, and I, and I want to hear from Justin because I know uh, social work, you all work in particularly with youth. Um, so as you hear Shauna speaking about, as you hear Shauna and as you hear um, Evan speaking a little bit about um, just this adult phase, this 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 uh, transition from youth to young adult, what are some of the things that you all are seeing and what are some of the things that you all are implementing as social works as um, you kind of come up against these challenges? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, one of the models that we're going to start using more and more is um, just a community based like action research. You know, um, we don't we don't want to we don't want to do a study on somebody and then tell them what to do to only have to do it again. You know, I would rather work with the people who are doing it and we can just find that solution together. So whether that means, you know, creating these feedback loops based on our initiatives on how to enhance them, whether it is, you know, like taking, not, not taking, of course, but, you know, using a, a, somebody else's idea, you know, we get pitched ideas all the time at social works where like, luckily we don't have to come up with them. We are just, yes. doing, you know, our public <laughs> charity and just doing what the people want us to do. And that's Here way easier than, doing all these focus groups and um, yada, yada, yada. Just to talk to the people. Let them tell them. Yeah. So, um, um, so those are like some of the innovative or one innovative model that, that social works is doing. Like when we call ourselves problem solvers, let's not um, you know, create double work. Let's just do it with the people that we're trying to help. Oh my God. When I say that is music to my ears, that is music to my ears, particularly because one, I designed from the human centered design proof point of view and then in addition to that like nine times out of ten all of the solutions that we looking for live in the people that we're quote unquote trying to serve and there's a huge difference between making people feel empowered and actually empowering people and I think that in a lot of circumstances, there are organizations out here who just make you feel empowered, right? But they won't give you the tools to actually get in here and create the solution. They won't give you the knowledge to actually get in here and connect with the folks that you need yep. to connect with to, uh, you know, move up in social mobility, things along the lines of that. So I love that. And I have been in some predicaments with some of my clients where I've taken part in creating these virtual feedback loops, which really helped to drive solutions that create change. Keyshawn, I saw you snapping your fingers over there. <laughs> I saw you snapping your fingers over there. So go ahead. Let me hear what you got to oh, add. 
honestly, the reason why I'm even here on this call in the first place is because I always went by this. I taught myself this is not, it's not what you know, it's who you know, then it's what you know. But you should always improve what you know. So it's time for you to apply what you know. When you meet who you know, you can always go farther at a faster pace. So me being who I am, I usually stay to myself. I'm more of an introverted kind of guy. So I'm usually looking up things that I was interested in. Or I'm always trying to find different people who do similar things that I do. Yeah. You finish? No. Did we my, lose you? No, my mic. My, my mic not Sorry. Oh, sorry. What I was saying was usually when I try to network with other people, I try to see um, what do they have to offer as well as what do I have to offer because – at the end of the day, we both want the same goal, but we have different things that we have at that point in time that's getting us where we need to go. So once again, not not knowing anybody, it's a major problem because you could just be shooting in the dark and there could be someone right next to you guys a lighter for your candle. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this has been a uh, phenomenal conversation. Uh, for me, I really think about when we talk about what needs to change, what are some innovative models, I think we have gotten so far down this rabbit hole of like best practices. If I had best practices one more time, <laughs> if I had best practices one more time, you know, we have gotten so far down this rabbit hole of best practices and all of these things that we need to be doing. But a lot of it, y'all, a lot of what I feel like we're talking about on this on this call is social and emotional for adults. <laughs> work <laughs> with social and emotional learning for adults and um and we we should put this on the on the list too chris to talk about this because evan mentioned this and i'm into this too and i'm really just interested in seeing how this shifts a lot of people nowadays we create educational spaces outside of the academy evan has one up and running right now but i think a lot of the fear for some young people and just people across the board is okay I take this this class that Justin made on this thing, but this employer don't care about that, <laughs> you know, or how does the, it, it works well when you're trying to venture into entrepreneurship. I think it works well. Uh, but when you're trying to transition into the workforce where let's say, for example, you want to get a job somewhere, um, do they, that, do they care? Like, does that, does that, does it, does this make sense what I'm saying? I guess it's accredited. And if you can yeah, speak to that. Go ahead, Evan. Yeah, or whoever. No, go ahead, Chris. You know, I, I think I think I heard some really good things about kind of the wraparound services. And I think that as our, our traditional way of looking at education is about to change. Um, I was talking with one of the directors at CPS today, and he's like, yeah, we're not planning to go back to school. And I know you, Cal, uh, decided to go the whole fall session virtual. And so I think as we start to look at some of those, again, those traditional means of educating people, I think we have to look outside of the box. You know, and I think that's one thing we're really big on with your passion first is not just guessing that we know what the community needs and what corporate needs, but literally going to employers and saying, hey, what is your best employer doing right now? What are their top skill sets? How are they improving? How are they progressing? And then taking that and wrapping that around our program and then vice versa. When I go into the community and I talk with these kids, I'm like, what do you like to do right now? Like, what are you passionate about, right? And nine times out of 10, some of them I hear, I'm passionate about taking care of my family, right? I'm passionate about putting food on the table. That's the bare minimum, right? Don't be passionate about the basics of things you're supposed to do, right? What are you really passionate about? And so I think really looking at assessing them, and I know you use a really good action research, Justice, and I really like that terminology. Um, I think that's so important right now because the research, things change by the time the research is done and we're ready to implement. So. I think really doing it in action, really trying to understand, take community assessments um, and have those feedback loops. And, and I think mm -hmm. if we can all as organizations across the board make that our new norm, then I think we can get through this successfully. But it has to be the new norm right now, you know? 
Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, a yeah, absolutely. Um, I think another thing, just to flip it back around to, I love your point about how some that some kids might be hesitant to do that because employers might not care. Well, guess what? Employers out there, I empower you to actually care about the creative things. Yeah, maybe wasn't they didn't go through like a legit accredited school, but they're still learning things that they're going to take with them into your job or what it, whatever it is. So I think I, I've, I've been seeing that more that, mm -hmm. you know, it's less of like a, you know, a cookie cutter uh, resume and more of like, cool, what are you passionate about? And um, that's why I really got connected with your passion first. Cause I, I, I love this as well. And when I had a couple interns um, and employed a couple people, when we had our office, I didn't, put out an ad like I need an I need a person for marketing I just looked for creative people and asked them what they liked and built like so, because in this in, in this industry like there's there's a room for a lot of different types of people and types of talents so I wanted to put basically create a position around a person's passion and try to dive in and figure yeah. out what their values are. So I encourage any employer to do that within reason. Yeah, there might be some basic skills you need, but like creative people are innovative and businesses need innovation. So try, you know, whoever's listening, try to try to do that if you can. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing that. Just just taking a moment to say, hey, people out there on the internet, if you're an employer and you're listening to this, take this seriously. Uh, one of the models I feel like I have been trying to push, and I want to just say this too, right? Because we never know who's listening, is um, trans this transition from uh, moving up to moving over. Um, and a lot of times I've just been thinking about what would it look like if instead of having this in-house built up career pathway that says this is how you move through the organization, we hire someone and we look at, um, okay, your job is feel full of all of these different task areas or these task roles. Which area are you super interested in? And that may mean you're not moving from this level to this level, but you're moving from this department to this department. We're taking you from this team to this team. Um, and I think that, you know, that just leaves room for people to explore their interests a lot more. If you all get a chance, there's this website. It's called 80,000 Hours. Um, and basically, they talk about like 80,000 hours is the number of hours you'll work in your lifetime. Oh, sheesh. Uh, right? I know. <laughs> 80,000 hours is um, the, the, the number of hours you'll work in your lifetime. And they talk about how like a great way to kind of just get a sense of what you're passionate about is to literally just follow your interest. Follow your interest and follow what you're good at, because if you're good at something, there's a chance that you could become really good at that thing. Um, and I think like if we took that approach in the workplace, we might see a drastic shift. So we are at our hour and 15 mark. <laughs> We've been out here kiki and like college friends. <laughs> <laughs> I love this conversation. I love engaging with you all. This has been an awesome episode. I think that we got some, I've been taking notes. I think that we got a lot of things we can work with from this conversation um, and a lot of follow-up conversations that we can have after this, just to begin seeing how we can continue to work with one another. I would say as we leave out, um, as we close out for today, I got one last question for each of you all. Um, all of you all work with youth. Um, I know Kishwan, you are youth like me because I'm a youth too. <laughs> Trying to keep my inner child fresh. Um, but I want to ask, as we work alongside youth and young adults in the creative workforce, what do we need? How do we need to be preparing ourselves? And what do we need to be preparing young adults for? What are those universal skills and competencies that you all want to uplift to anyone listening to this chat? Anyone thinking about transitioning into the creative workforce? I'll kick it off. Be able to deal with ambiguity more than anything. Things will change and you will have to adapt. Just like we see now with this Corona stuff. Like, yeah, this is the extreme, but... Things like that are going to change. Think, uh, you know, income isn't going to be streaming all the time, so you have to constantly be ahead of the game and just deal deal with that change. I, just make it be okay with it. Thanks, Evan. You know, I would say 
change is forever. You know, I'm a former Marine. That's the Marine Corps motto. Change is forever. But I think with that change, there's a positive mindset that you have to have. I was taught my, I think my boy Daryl's on. Daryl Thatcher, shout out to him if he's on. But we were talking about the other day having challenges in our lives. And he was like, well, I don't really have challenges today. I'm kind of just flowing, right? And it got me thinking like, there's always going to be something coming at you, but there's an ebb and a flow of life, right? There's an up and a down. There's a good and a bad, right? And maybe we don't call it good and bad. Maybe we won't call it hard and easy. Maybe we just call it being, right? And so how do we really understand being in that process of life without trying to have to get where we got to go? You know, I think sometimes we just struggle with that as young adults trying to make it anywhere and as adults trying to make it anywhere, we're always trying to go impress this person, impress that person. Um, a big reason I started Your Passion First is because I got tired of trying to impress everyone else. I was, I was trying to impress everybody for 40 years of my life, right? And so I think if we can focus on being with ourselves and what we are really meant to be and bring to the world and focus less on who we got to impress and who we got to go and be a part of and what group and be a part of our own group, then I think that that will really, really set some of these kids' souls on fire. Mm, thank you. Um, one thing for me, um, for the artists that I see that we all need to have is integrity and the the power to be ourselves. We always, we always be ourselves and people are talented. Are talented. There's people being skeptical and there's people that have the things that you have about yourself. So, um, for example, there are people that say, well, I don't like this certain artist because he doesn't make sense or this and the third, whereas you might like that artist because although he may not make sense to them, you know that there's, it comes off as poetry to you and the beat that he uses, it's more of a form of expression. So you know at the end of the day that doing what doing what makes you happy is honestly what makes people interested in you is something that you have to keep in mind at the end of every single day. That's the reason I pay attention to you in the first place because you're showing something that they haven't seen before. Um, I, I want to jump in and say your mental health, coming from the therapist, of course, your mental health. Um, a lot of times, because energy is big. Now, this is Queen Prophecy talking now. Energy is big. You put What you put out comes back to you. So if you're dealing with a bunch of negativity all the time, I'm thinking negative, I'm thinking negative, you're secreting chemicals in your brain, and that's the energy you are then putting out into the universe. So to, you have to basically, you have to learn how to let go of those things that hurt you, or use that pain and drive it towards positive things that you want to do in life, because you could use that energy to do some great things. So energy is a really big thing. And I know that when you want something, you got to feel it in your bones. That's what makes you wake up in the morning. And that's what gets you started on your way. You have to feel that. But if you're stuck in your past and stuck on your pain, it gets hard to get past that so that you can move forward. So I would say let's get our mental health um, right as well. Uh, and yeah, everybody said everything. Y'all amazing. <laughs> I'm really rocking with that mental health because that truly is the key. Um, I'm going to just shout out to Misha. I mean, um, in, in one of our comments, um, I'm just seeing that um, that's one of the big things as being on the hiring side and also being a person who has looked for a job. You know, the something that I would I would tell people to prepare for is the things that you honestly can't prepare for, like the things that, uh, you know, that makes you you. The, you talk. I think Tamisha and me are talking about just like having big ideas, you know, like you can't teach that. You can't teach imagination. You can't like, um, you know, people are, are definitely born with with some of that stuff. You could teach people how to input things on an Excel sheet. You could teach people mm -hmm. how to. Input you can teach people how to lock up and sweep floors. Yeah. Teach people to think beyond a circumstance or a certain situation and, and the execution that comes with those ideas and thinking lofty. So I would say, um, you know, all the students on here, anybody on here, you know, um, just, just focus on what makes you you because that's literally the one thing that nobody else has. So true. <laughs> Don't you mean put your passion first? Let's go. Let's go. By saying, my thing would be learn how to talk to people. Learn how to talk to people. 
Uh, there's a really good book I read. It's called The People Factor by Van Moody. And one of the things it says is that God uses people to take you to the next place in your life. Um, that people keep us moving forward. Everybody in your life is a character in your story. Yes. And if you know anything about screenwriting, you know that your characters, your surrounding characters, your supporting characters keep you moving forward. So learn how to talk to people. Um, I'm so grateful to have had this conversation with these amazing people today. And I just want to give you all some honor and some praise for all the work that you all are doing in your individual lives. I know it's not easy. I know that it can be challenging, but I also know that there are big, 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 big things in store for you all. And we here at Your Passion First are going to be here for you all through whatever. Y'all got us for life now. <laughs> Y'all got us for life now. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Your Passion First family. And I just want to say thank you so much to our viewers who have been checking out with us today. We got some great comments. Salia, Carrie Morris, thank you so much. Tamisha, thank you so much. Andre King, Dre Hunt, thank you so much. Sahara, thank you so much. Justin, we really appreciate you for coming on today. Um, and just want to say thank you. Wait, what's happening here? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put this song on. I want to put a song on by Swervez, one of our. Okay, please um, do, it, ahead, do, it, it, do it. Do it. Do it. Thank you so Mickey. much. You all, before you do that, let me just say you all can catch us back here again next Thursday. Uh, we're going to be talking with Colette. Colette is the founder of Mez Club Media Collective. It's a media collective for women of color and non binary folks here in the city of Chicago. And we're going to be talking about creating community. Uh, building community for creatives of color and what that looks like and what that means. So I hope that you all will join us again next week for this super dope, super cool conversation. Evan, Justin, Shauna, Kishwan, thank you all so much for today. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate y'all coming on. Um, y'all are amazing. And again, just inspired to be around great people doing amazing work, not just in arts and music and entertainment, um, but also in the community, man, like it doesn't make sense to do one without the other, right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna be something in the community and if you're gonna do a job, then why not try and find a way to combine them? So all of y'all are really emulating that in your spirits. And so I really appreciate it. Um, again, shout out again to Kim Marzano. I appreciate you. Shout out to my mom, my pops, everyone out there that's been supportive through all this, like real talk. Um, it's been a lot of supportive people. Martin Ho helping with our intro. Shout out to Brian with the website. Um, shout out to everyone in the program, all the mentors. Um, yeah. Shout out to Catherine on the board. Um, Mickey, you are freaking amazing. Thank you so much for your energy, your time, your spirit, your soul. Um, you've been a blessing um, and a godsend. So I really appreciate you. And yes, really just shout out welcome. to everyone that's, uh, that's been a part of this journey so far. We're just getting started. Uh, we're working with the Invest Southwest um, initiative. Fingers crossed, yo, working on this bid for some murals um, with some folks on Chicago Avenue. So uh, be on the lookout. We're, we're kind of getting tired of talking. We're ready to take some action. So uh, yes, let's please go follow with it. us. Follow us on social media if you would like to get involved um, in any way. If you would like to join our podcast or be a guest on our podcast, be a mentor or a coach, or if you're interested in being a young adult participant, please go to our website at www.yourpassion, the number one ST, yourpassionfirst.com. Or you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Your Passion First. Thank you all so much. Have a good night. Your passion Thanks, guys. one you. Shout out Thanks, to Swervez. Guys. We're going to close it out with Swervez and the Beats, one of his newest hits called Bash and Baby. Um, let's hear it a little bit. Beats by Swervez. I holler at y'all. See you, Justin. Remember, y'all, in order to follow your dreams, 
You got to put your passion first. We'll see y'all next week. See you next Out. week. See ya. Bye. Bye.